to Create Kids, and if you've been here before, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about honesty, and that seems pretty simple, right? Just don't lie, tell the truth, and keep it moving. But sometimes we will either be tempted to lie or other people will lie to us, and we need to be prepared on how to handle that. And we also need to understand what happens if we do lie. So we're going to read from the book of Genesis today. Um, so go to Genesis 3 verses 4 through 5. And it says, You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. If we go back to the book of Genesis, a lot of us know the story of creation, but we're just going to do a really quick, really quick recap so that you guys know where we're coming from today. So God made the world, everything in it, and he saw that it was good. And then he was like, you know, there's something missing. So let me make humans. So he put Adam and Eve in the garden and asked them to take care of the garden, take care of everything in it. And he said, the only thing that I don't want you to do is eat the fruit that's in the tree in the middle of the garden, which was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He was like, don't eat it and you guys will be good to go. One day they're in the garden and the serpent comes up to Eve and he's like, hey, Eve, I got a question. And she's like, okay, what's up? And he's like, did God really tell you that you can't eat any of the fruit from any of the trees? And Eve was like, boy, no, we would be real hungry if we couldn't eat any of the fruit. Like God told us we can't eat or even touch the fruit from the tree in the middle. And the serpent was like, I mean, but you won't die though. Like you'll just be like God, you'll know good and evil, but it won't kill you. And he was able to trick Eve into eating the fruit and then she ate it and she gave it to Adam and as soon as they ate it they realized that they didn't have any clothes on because back then they didn't have to wear clothes <laughs> but we do now because of what they did so they were like oh snap we don't have any clothes on so they took some leaves and they like sewed them together and they made themselves some little clothes or whatever so they're hiding and God comes in to the garden and he's like walking around and he's like, Eve, Adam, where are you guys at? And they were hiding, but you know, God knew where they were. So they came out and God's talking to them and there. He's like, why are you hiding? And why do you guys have clothes on? Like, I didn't, that's not what you guys had on before. And so Adam told them what was going on, told God what was going on. And God got a little bit upset. And he ended up punishing the serpent and Adam and Eve got punished too. I want to break down a few things real quick. Number one, the serpent twisted God's words. God never said they couldn't eat any of the fruit. And that's what the serpent started out with. He's like, hey, did God really tell you that you can't eat any of the fruit? And it, it got Eve's attention because she was like, no, that's not what God said. And... We have to be careful when people try to twist other people's words because it gets our attention and we feel the need to correct them when we don't always have to. Like we can just let them be great and let them think what they want to think as long as we know what the truth is. Okay. Um, so the enemy or like people that we deal with, they might try to tell you the truth, but sprinkle some lies in there just to trick you and get you to do what they want you to do. And the serpent wanted Eve to eat the fruit knowing what would happen if she did and he was able to succeed which brings me to my second point which is we really have to know what God says for ourselves okay if we go back to Genesis 2 we see that God speaks to Adam about not being allowed to eat the fruit he doesn't say it to Eve so it was Adam's job to tell Eve why she couldn't eat that fruit. So either Adam didn't tell Eve the whole truth or Eve just started making stuff up. Because if you remember, God told Adam, do not eat the fruit. Eve told the serpent, God said, we can't eat or even touch it. So there was some miscommunication going on there and it messed him up. 
And that's why we need to be able to know what God says for ourselves. You have to be able to go to God and talk to God for yourself to know what he says. Because if you don't know for yourself, um, communication can get mixed up. And it's like, have you ever played that telephone game where it's like a circle of people and I might say, I like peanut butter and jelly. And then I have to whisper that to the person next to me and they whisper it to the next person. And by the time it gets back to me, it could have been, I like peanuts with uh, candy corn and ice cream. And that's not what I said because the person on the one side of me didn't hear it from me. They heard it after hearing it from so many other people. So when we are dealing with knowing God's word, we can't depend on hearing it from other people all the time. It's good to like listen to other people teach it like me right now. I'm teaching this to you guys, but what you guys have to do is take what I'm teaching you and go read it in the Bible for yourself so that you can make sure that what I'm telling you is right and then you will know it for yourself. And God can talk to you about what I'm saying so that when someone comes along to try and trick you, you can be like, no, 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 because, you know, Jessica said that, you know, X, Y, Z, but then I also know because God told me himself that I'm not supposed to do this or we're not supposed to do that or whatever. So it's important to really know what God is saying yourself instead of relying on other people because, you know, Eve had to rely on Adam and something got lost in translation and she ended up sinning. Um, and the last thing is that I, I really want us to understand is that lies affect everyone involved. So you might try to tell like a little white lie, like, oh, I didn't steal your glue when there's like 10 other glues at the table. So it's not a big deal. Somebody could just grab another glue, but it could be their favorite glue. And so you end up getting in trouble for stealing and then they get in trouble because you stole their glue so they had to take someone else's glue and you know then it turns into a whole thing where everybody's in trouble right and that's what happened with the serpent and Adam and Eve right they were in the garden and the e and the serpent lied to Eve so when God found out the serpent got in trouble he had to God changed some things about the serpent and told him you know that he's gonna slither on the ground and that he's gonna you know always you know have these hard problems and stuff like that and if you go back in the bible and read it for yourself you'll see it and then eve, adam and eve also got in trouble because they knew what the truth was but they got convinced otherwise so when we when we know the truth about something and someone lies to us and tricks us into doing something wrong that doesn't automatically get us off the hook. Like we can't just go and be like, well, they told me that I wasn't supposed to do blah, blah, blah. So I shouldn't get in trouble. Like, no, you, you did something wrong, period. And you're going to get in trouble for it. And that's what happened with Adam and Eve, which is why it's so important to not only know what the truth is about the Bible, but to also remember it, which is why you can't just read something one time and be like, okay, that's cool. And then never read it again. The Bible is something that is constantly, it's, it's alive. It's called the living word. Every time you read it, you pull something new out of it. Like I could teach this one story probably like five or six different ways because it's constantly changing. The words don't change, but the meaning does. Like the closer you get to God, the more he can reveal to you about what he's saying. And that's what's so exciting about reading the word. And you just, you have to know what it says and remember it so that when the enemy comes and tries to trick you, you won't fall for it. You can say, no, 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 devil, because Jesus told me to tell you that I'm not supposed to do that. So I'm not going to do it. Right? Like you're, you're totally allowed to talk to the devil like that. You might not be able to talk to your parents like that or your teacher like that because you might get in trouble, but I don't think anybody will ever get mad at you for telling the devil, uh-uh, nope, not doing it. Get out of my face because Jesus said that I shouldn't do that. Like, you'll always be allowed to talk to the devil like that, okay? So if you ever need to just get out some frustration, just start going off on the devil. I'm not going to make those mistakes. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sin. And you can't make me because I love Jesus and he told me that I should do this, 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 right? So 
Knowing the truth for yourselves and remembering it is how you keep yourselves from falling for lies. So I want you guys to take some time this week to read the Bible for yourselves and learn something new. Okay, that way when the enemy tries to attack you or trick you or convince you to do something you're not supposed to do, you will know and you'll be able to remember what God said. Okay, I hope you guys have the best week ever.